What is up guys and welcome to another play and explain video from PLO Poker Coaching. Uh, we are playing some PLO 500 today. Um, we are trying to get four tables running but this fourth table is a little inconsistent. Um, so we may pull in a 200 table depending on what the action is like. Uh, top left, pretty marginal open, and we flop top and bottom with a gut shot. And obviously the player behind us is very wide. So we can have a little more interaction on this board. I mean, we're not going to have uh, very many leads here on a king high board when we get called from a regular cutoff player. Um, but I almost do want to lead here against a very weak big blind range. You know, he can have things like open enders and two pairs. I'm not obviously as scared of strong hands like kings, and we do block that quite well anyway. So I'm going to go ahead and bet as my hand isn't doing fantastic on a lot of turns again if you're playing against regular players here this is a straightforward like check range but when this guy is very wide on the cough it changes the dynamics a little bit and we can obviously call a check res <laughs> which we do get so you will have some sets which we're obviously not doing well against we block some of the wraps, so it's not a fantastic spot. Um, we are going to call here and play some turns. And we likely at this point just have to call it off. I think we're... Uh, we do block a lot of the, of the draws, so I think that this is going to be... Pretty big punt, but and wow, <laughs> I mean, that is pretty sick. That is how you get rewarded as an absolute fish. methodology on the flop saying an unlikely king's scenario and we do run into the kings um obviously that is not how a solver would have ever played that hand um so i mean it'll be interesting to look into it and think through it more after the fact um here we're obviously gonna bet here on blocking diamonds we could go for a check raise um, but again, these two players behind don't particularly look too passive, and we did just get check raised by this guy. And we take it down. I don't mind raising here with the big blind being so tight and this guy not really three bang but calling a lot. I do want to play this guy a lot in position. Our hand on the flop does have some future straight door blockers, not really much value in a free card here. So I am going to go ahead and bet. Not ideal that we don't have a spade, um, but obviously an easy hand to bet fold. And we do turn the straight draw blocker. Problem is, is it's such a dynamic turn that we're not actually going to be able to barrel much on many rivers, and he goes away and bets anyway, so it makes our decision very easy. But definitely be careful on these types of boards, because it, it is tempting if he checks that to go ahead and bet, but one, your overall fold equity, 
is so low just because it's a draw such a draw heavy board with two flush draws out there and then also if you do get called um you know half the deck on the river you are not going to be able to go ahead and triple barrel so the value of your blockers there are just not worth as much The action is often uh, a little high, uh, a little uh, slower at 500, and obviously it'll pick up later on in the day. We're playing on a Sunday here, um, but yeah, not ideal that we can't get four tables going right now. But the tables that are in play look to be okay. This one isn't great, and I'm sat directly to the right of the of the spot at the table. Um, but over here we have, um, we have a pretty good setup, although this guy is somewhat short, but this guy is, you know, very passive and likely recreational. We get min three bet. We're obviously not folding. I would usually say that when you see this uh, sort of sizing pre flop, that it is almost never aces. It's always um, a recreational that you know thinks that they have a good sort of playable rundown hand and they want to juice up the pot. Um, but given that this guy is so short, he, he still probably has a decent amount of aces in his range here. Um, I mean, I think we're likely calling the jam on the flop with the backdoor flush draw and inside wrap. Uh, obviously drawing relatively thin, uh, but I think we probably have 33%. Pretty good turn. And we get there. Running pretty hot to start the session. Nailing that, uh, nailing the gut shot and, uh, and getting there with the uh, runner runner. And also guys, make sure that you um, check out a video that I just posted about getting two hours of free poker coaching. So I am giving away uh, two sessions, two hour long sessions. All you have to do is uh, make sure that you subscribe to the channel and head over to the video that is pinned on the homepage of the channel. Comment anything you want uh, below the video. That's how I'm gonna pick the winners. And then, you know, as I mentioned in the video, like and share it because we're not going to be giving that away till we get to 500 subs and the more we get it shared the faster we will get there um these are really bad kings but we have some really tight players behind and this guy is you know the spot at the table pretty much um so i don't mind actually flying this i mean these are some of the worst kings you can have but playing in the button in a single raise pot against this guy Given that these guys are mostly going to fold, it is great. Not the flop we were looking for, though, unfortunately. And even though he is so wide, and... I mean, I, I actually... Before I started this video, I did... I, random, I raised this guy with just random four cards. And we could honestly call here, just because he is C-bang 100% out of position. So we could floor him and bluff some turns like that one. Which is pretty much the best... Uh, turn we could hit apart from a king problem is is that he's so short that our blockers go way down in value but we do block a spade too
this guy is, is relentlessly batting. And we do end up taking it down. I mean, players like that against um, people when they get that shot are just not effective, but when you see someone that has stats like this, I mean, it's not over a huge sample, but this is Seabet out of position. Um, he's 100%, he's Seabet in position 100%, and his aggression factor is 53 and 78% uh, on the flop and turn, so. And when you start with a 79% VPIP range, um, you get to turns with very, very weak ranges. I guess we're not really getting any action on this 2-5 table, so... It's okay with three tables right now, I guess. It would be nice to get a little heads up action. Oh, and hopefully this guy stays. Nope. Uh, these are some kings that I would consider three bang, likely out of position. Uh, probably still on the button, depending on the player too. Um, it's obviously just a very nice hand, but you know, three bang um, in position, you really don't want to be doing it with hands that you hate to get far bet with, and this would be one of those hands, because uh, we have a lot of playability. Uh, here, top set, pretty disconnected board, um, but I don't think that it is overkill web, you know, or too disconnected that we want to check back. But we're obviously going to see a lot of folds. Um, I don't really think that I want to do too much here in this limp pot without a heart. So I mean, this is it's a pretty dreamy uh, table here on the top left. And we're looking around over some decent hand samples. It looks like we really only have one other rag at the table or potential rag but he is extremely tight and sat to my left which is nice so we hopefully won't be leaving this table anytime soon and we can get some interesting spots And guys, let, let me know as well what, what kind of videos that you guys want to see. It seems like um, the Plan Explain videos are more of the favorite format uh, based on kind of views and feedback, um, you know, which is fine. I like making these videos. Um, if there's other kind of stuff that you would like to see, definitely drop a comment below and let me know. I'm always open to doing different types of videos, whether you want to see session reviews, um, you know, or specific concepts, uh, things like that. Let me know what you guys are struggling with or would like to learn about. The very marginal hand that I would actually, um, Play in this lineup even against an open. And regardless of if this guy limped or not. Hands like this in weak lineups, um, although you want to play more hands, aren't necessarily the best ones to um, 
start opening if you have someone like this sat behind you that's playing 70% of hands um, you're just often going to get called and be playing out of position it's not as bad to open on the button obviously um, but you know once this guy calls and then you've got a 60% feed pipper in the big blind the EV of this particular hand you know uh, which a lot of it is derived from taking down the blinds with an ace blocker um, is just uh, kind of diminished when the chances of both of these guys folding is almost zero we do get some heads up action on the bottom right and get the bullets and pretty marginal defend here top right uh Overpair, pair blocker on this type of board, unblocking straight draws. Give me some relatively tough runouts. Um, I think I do just want to go ahead and bet. This is a board that would probably have a decent potting range on um, in a six max sang, but there's going to be more connection on this board um, in general. And heads up um so kind of gonna go in the middle here with the three quarter sizing and top right no need in bang yeah sure we could fold out some tens some nines um but we do have some outs and we do river a straight which is pretty promising and we get the five on the turn The ace of diamonds in our hand. I'm tempted to check call uh, the turn. It should often go uh, check, check, and we time out anyway, so. Uh, is there value in raising? Probably not. And we see the pot size bet on the bottom right which again is not ideal when we have the ace of diamonds it takes away a lot of his bluffs um, usually people are doing this with a hand that is ahead of aces kind of an unknown player here and yeah, I think that we just go ahead and fold here, to be honest. I don't think that we have that much equity, even against this, um, or that we're slight equity favorites, potentially, against some of his draw hands. Um, be interesting to check that one out. Maybe that was, maybe it was a small bet on the turn, and fold to a raise. I just don't know enough about this play yet. Um and generally the population in that situation is going to be heavily skewed towards value. This is very marginal on the top right. I actually thought <clears throat> that was a, a, different, a different table uh, where I would call a little wider. And with diamonds and hearts, we will just be check folding bottom right. Um, just nowhere near enough interaction here on a very dynamic board to consider stabbing, even though I usually will stab in position pretty aggressively. Um, I'm not folding jacks here to a third. And queen, queen, seven, seven. I think we definitely get to three bet against this guy's wrench. And... Running pretty hot. Um, and we do get four bet. Um, not ideal. I'm tempted to check this back actually, to be honest. Although two people did call on the flop and we do block an eight, so I think we do want to go ahead and bet. Um, I don't think we can fold, unfortunately. 
We flap as well as we can. I think we do just want a pot in case he checks back with something. And that is unfortunate. Um, we get a call and a res here, top right. I mean, he's not res folding, so we get this guy's money in. Uh, the question is, is this guy going to overcall? Probably not. And he had the underboat. Yeah, I mean, don't really like that play. Um, do not like that play. I mean, he, he is, he's obviously only getting caught by better. He blocks any draws that he could maybe get action from if someone's getting pretty loose. Um, so yeah, not the best, but we will definitely take it. And just folding here out of the small blind. We were playing 500, get to call a decent amount more, uh, especially on Ignition, which has a very low rake structure. Um, but the roughly from my player 500, the rake structure is about 5 BB 100. Um, so pretty solid. Uh, we are going to raise here just because we unblock the straight draws and the no flush draw, and then obviously have a very strong hand. This may be a shorter video today. We might be losing some of the action here, um, but we will we will try again later today. It is still a little after lunchtime, so the games will definitely pick up. Um, here, it's not a great board for our um, range. Uh, I don't want to three bet this guy. He's so short and also want to play with this guy behind. So I'm going to check here, and if we face a bet, I'm just going to check call here. Um, not a fantastic turn. Um, very un well, he might check back some top twos, some sets. Um, just folding bottom left against the short stack. Um, but with a pair blocker, I think that we can go ahead a bit small and we do get raised so I think that we can just fold this to be honest um, obviously don't have any outs against value and there still can be some difficult rivers um, on a diamond um, so yeah, I'm just gonna go ahead and bet fold. Don't think that we're getting bluffed too much there um, against population. Maybe taking some two pair hands and turning them into bluffs, but um, obviously we block 
uh, we block some of those buffs, so. And I think here we can just fold. Don't have a fantastic hand for bluff raising. And we do lose that tail as well, so I think that we're going to uh, call it a session for this particular uh, plan X plan. Um, but I will put some more together this afternoon, uh, hopefully when the tables are running a bit more. And we can get back to it. Um, all right, well, thanks everyone for tuning in and uh, we will see you soon and good luck at the tables out there.